Dear students, now we are going to discuss frequency reuse in wireless mobile communication. Frequency reuse, it is an important technique used in cellular concept. In wireless mobile communication, we can consider a large cell with a single high power transmitter to cover the entire users within this area. Okay, so here we can say there are 2100 subscribers are available within this area but the transmitter has only 700 frequency channels. So while allocating the channels to the entire users, the spectral efficiency is getting affected as well as the user capacity is also getting reduced. Do you all understand this concept? So here we can face the spectral efficiency problem as well as user capacity problem. So here we can introduce the concept cellular concept. In this we are going to split this large cell into many small cells with many low power transmitter which can cover the entire area of the small cells. Okay so instead of having a large power transmitter we can have many low power transmitters with many smaller cells. So here cell represents a geographical unit with a limited coverage area. So each cell is having its own base station. So base station is nothing but the transceiver which can support transmission and reception. So it is a communication point for one or more mobile devices within that area. So here each cell is having its own base station. So each base station is allocated with a portion of the total channels. So here we are having 700 frequency channels. Then we can create a cluster with 7 cells with equal portion of channels. So 700 can be split into 100 to each channel. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Each one is having 100 channels. So here we have to ensure that the neighboring cells should not be allocated with the same set of frequency. For example, if you are going to allocate 1 to 100 frequencies for this A cell, this same should not be used for this B, C, D, E, F and G. So here we can allocate 101 to 200, here 201 to 300. 301 to 400, 401 to 500, 501 to 600, 601 to 700. So here we have to ensure that the neighboring cells should not be allocated with the same frequency range. It should be allocated completely different frequency ranges in order to avoid the interference. Do you all understand that concept? If you want to support 2100 users, we can create three clusters. So each cluster can support 700 frequency channels. So here cluster is nothing but a group of cells with a complete set of frequency range. So 700 frequency channels means we can have the group of cells with 700 frequency channels. Do you all understand this one? So here Frequency reuse is widely used to improve the spectral efficiency of the mobile communication system. The cells A, here it is A, here it is A. So all the cells with the same letters can use the same set of frequency. The neighboring cells should not use the same set of frequencies but a cell which is having a sufficiently large enough distance that can use the same set of frequencies. So here A, this one is A, we can ensure that the distance is sufficiently large enough to reduce the frequency interference. So here we can say this G and this G and this G, all this G cells are having the same set of frequency. So with this 700 frequency channels, we can support 2100 users within that area by using frequency reuse concept. So here it is widely used in this mobile communication. Do you all understand this concept? So that's what given here. Frequency reuse concept is used to improve the spectral efficiency in 
wireless mobile communication. So how can we use this? By limiting the coverage area, the same group of channels can be reused to cover the different cells. Okay. Then we can define the frequency reuse as the design process of selecting and allocating the group of channels for all the base stations within the system. So here the same set of frequencies can be used for same cells that are separated by sufficiently large enough distance in order to reduce the interference. Okay. So here we can say frequency reuse is the design process involved in allocating and reuse of the radio channels. So that is called as frequency reuse. It will improve the spectrum efficiency in mobile communication. So whenever we are going to design the geographical area, we can prefer three shapes that is square shape, an equilateral triangular shape, hexagonal shape. But the hexagonal shape is widely used due to the following reasons. The few number of cells can cover the entire area in hexagon. It approximates the circular radiation pattern and here the terrain is completely flat. For this reasons, we can prefer hexagon shape. So next we are going to design the frequency reuse process. For that, first we need to find out the actual radio coverage for a cell. So that is called as footprint. Footprint means actual radio coverage of a cell. After that we can identify the number of channels required for the footprint region. If this footprint region is about 1 kilometer, for that 1 kilometer we can identify the number of channels required. Then we can finalize the number of hexagonal cells required and then assign the channels for every cell. So these are the steps. Next we are going to analyze the frequency reuse concept in detail. So for that we can consider a cellular region with a number of cells in a cluster that is very important one. So that is also known as cluster size. So here capital N represents the number of cells in a cluster. So in the previous example we can consider the cluster size is 7 because 7 cells can cover the complete set of frequencies. Next the total number of tubeless channels that is tubeless means it can support two way communication transmission as well as reception. So how many channels are there? 700 frequency channels ok. So here K represents the group of channels allocated to each cell. So here each cell is allocated with 100 channels, okay. So here we can ensure that the group of channels allocated to each cell is always less than the total number of channels. So 100 is always less than 700, that is an example. So next we are going to divide the total number of channels equally to all the cells. Then we can get the total number of duplex channels is equal to K into capital N. So N is the number of cells, K is the group of channels. So 100 into 7 number of cells, then we can get the total channels as 700. Do you all understand that one? If you want to increase the capacity, we can replicate the cluster M times. So if you want to support 2100 users, we can replicate this cluster to 3 times. So each cluster can support 700 channels then 3 into 700 we can get 2100 subscribers. Okay that is 2100 channels. So similarly if you want to increase the capacity then we can increase the M value. So cellular capacity can be obtained by using this formula C is equal to K N M. K is the number of channels allocated to each cell that is 100, n is the number of cells in a cluster that is 7, m is the replication. So here we can say if we want to support 3500 users, we can replicate the cluster to 5 times. Then we can get 3500 users within that area. Do you all understand this one? So this capacity can also be represented as k 
k into n is nothing but total channel s so s into m so next one is frequency reuse factor so frequency reuse factor represents the number of channels assigned to each cell within the cluster so it is 1 by n of the total available channels it is inversely proportional to the number of cluster size okay so the next one is the reuse distance so the reuse distance represents the distance between two cells that can use the same set of frequency it should be sufficiently large enough to avoid the interference between the channels okay so it can be computed from link budget calculation finally cell planning with hexagonal cells so here we are going to find the nearest co-channel neighbors of a particular cell to allocate the same set of frequency. So it is the important step in frequency reuse to find out the nearest co-channel neighbors. That means where we are going to reuse the same frequency with the proper distance. So for that we can follow two steps. First one move I cell along any chain of hexagon and then turn 60 degree counterclockwise and move J cells. So here we can find out the distance as square root 3 into square root of I into R plus cos 60 degree K into R the whole square plus sin 60 degree K into R the whole square. So where R is nothing but the distance between the centers of two adjacent hexagons. So from this we can find out the number of cells in the cluster as i squared plus i into j plus j squared. We can consider this i and j are non-negative integers. Finally we can get the distance between two co-channels is given as square root of 3 into n. n represents the cluster size. Okay. So this is the diagrammatic explanation for the cell planning with hexagonal cells. We can take this I cell. Okay. So we are going to move this I cell along any chain of this hexagon. And then we can take 60 degree counterclockwise and move towards J cells. Okay. So here R represents the distance between the centers of two hexagons. Adjacent hexagons.